Welcome. Welcome back to the Indiana Jones Minute, the podcast where we get to the heart of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, one lash at a time. I'm Pete Mummert. I'm Tom Taylor. I'm Jerry Porter. And today we are very happy to welcome Song Riddle and Rachel Fox to the show. You might remember Song from his recurring guest role on the Star Wars Minute. And Rachel, I think maybe you've been on there too. Yep. And they both host something called Planet Lumina, a podcast about General Hospital. That is correct. Hello. Yep. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Oh, welcome. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we're excited to have you guys on today. And today we are discussing Minute 76, which begins with both Indy and Shorty being chained up and whipped and ends with the very famous line from the Temple of Doom video game, soon Kali Ma will rule the world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, it's funny, you know, watching this movie, every time I watch it, I hear those sound bites from the video <laughs> game oh, playing in my head whenever they come up. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we walk <laughs> from here. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and I, I did come up, uh, people were asking the last few minutes about some of the translations of what Mola Ram had been saying. Um, and I was able to track down a couple of those. Uh, wow. When Mola Ram first attempts to pour the blood into Indy's mouth, he says, I will fill your veins with the blood of demons, fill your veins with the blood of demons, <laughs> wow. fill your veins with the blood of demons. <laughs> yeah, he says that several times. Wow. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. I just have to interject here. I mean, we know from our discussion with Dr. Tom that that's not true. <laughs> Right. You you can't drink blood and then it ha you know, it, it fill your veins like yeah. that. I'm gonna right. fill your veins with a little too much iron. That's what he should be saying. Right. Yeah, <laughs> well it is true if, if like he said, it's cut with something else. Like maybe I'm gonna oxygenate your veins with the <laughs> <laughs> right. And then the other one, uh the when when the choir is chanting, um, they say Mola Ram, Suda Ram, which means it's basically they're saying Mola Ram is the true Rama, which is incredibly blasphemous because wow. they're oh. saying he's the true version of the god Rama, who is an incarnation of Vishnu and sort of the supreme god in the Hindu religion. Wow, so boy. Mola Ram is actually saying he's basically the supreme god. That always goes well. Yeah, he's, go he's going for broke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mo Mola Ram just, uh, I mean, he's like a lead foot when it comes to this whole cult thing. <laughs> yeah. He's not really letting up here. And, he, and he's starting from, I mean, he doesn't even have all five stones, and he's already just, you know, yeah. he's, he's flooring it. What's yeah. he going to get up to once he's got all five of them? Then he's going to be totally insufferable. <laughs> no talking to that guy. <laughs> well, I noticed uh, something very special about second two. Um, you know, I'm sure all you guys know, Coco Chanel famously said, before you leave the house, look in the mirror and take one thing off. And <laughs> I'm looking at these Temple of Doom beef eater guards that yeah. are in full violation of this Coco Chanel <laughs> maxim. I don't know, like, like, uh... You know, uh, the Maharaja grabs, like, they, 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 he goes over and grabs a whip from one of the those Temple of Doom beef eater guards. The guy's just standing yeah. there. Yeah. And he's draped in a ton of accessories. Too many, yeah. if you ask me. And too many, obviously, if you ask Coco Chanel. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's hot. I mean, that's just got to be, like, <laughs> yeah. oppressively hot to wear. Yeah. Muggy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Muggy, Muggy thuggies. thuggies. <laughs> 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 yeah. But, I, I, you know, more of a, a general comment about this minute. It is, is it ironic that Indiana Jones is getting whipped? Yeah, and you can see it on his <laughs> yeah. face, actually, when he sees yeah. that Pat Roach has his whip. He's like, oh, wait, are you kidding me? Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> this, is, this isn't how this is supposed to go. 
So that is Pat Roach. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All I, I mean that's that's just like somebody puncturing Captain Hook with a hook. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> See how you like it. <laughs> that is Pat Roach, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He he plays like a, he plays a lot of different people in these movies. He's a recurring sort of brutalizer of <laughs> Indiana yeah. Jones. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> We've called him many things, but not a brutalizer. No, a, no, a recurring. From now on, yeah, a recurring brutalizer. That's awesome. <laughs> recurring brutalizer. Sounds like a special move in a video game. It, my, my meter's all the way up. I can use my recurring brutalizer. Right. It's like a twist back. You have to press left punch. And, yeah. You know. Gets them every time. Well, I'm, and I'm wondering, you know, because, you know, Indy is, is, is such an expert with the whip, do you think he's critiquing Pat Roach's whipping style? No. You call that whipping. <laughs> no, see, I think he's going like, you know, wow, this guy is really using his whole body. <laughs> he really just needs to use the wrist. That's the, he's, he's kind of expending too much energy with this whole midsection and the arm and everything. He just, it's all in the wrist. I'm not going to say anything, but it's going to kill me. Or maybe he's thinking the opposite. Maybe he's like, you know, I, you know I'm leaving a lot of power on the table. When, you know, when I just do a flick of the wrist, I'm not really getting behind it. You think he's taking notes. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to thank this guy, but I should probably thank this guy. He's showing me the true way. But the, yeah, there's like, wait, they, they start whipping Indy and you're like, okay, they're like, like, you see them, you see the whip connect and everything. And there's like actually blood and stuff. And, I'm, and the first time yeah. I was watching this for this, I was like, okay, I get it. Like they were, there's, we, we saw kids getting whipped earlier, but you didn't see it. You, it didn't connect, you know, like you, you, mm -hmm. you cut to the cowering kid and then you see the whip come up and it comes down and you hear the whip. So, you know, I'm like, okay, so they're not going to, oh my gosh, the Maharaj is whipping Shorty, like yeah. full on, like not blinking. Like we have to watch this now. I suppose in this case, you know, since they don't show the kids being whipped before, maybe Indy sort of becomes a, a proxy for what's going on with those kids in the minds of the viewers. I was kind of wondering about this because, I, you know, I... I never realized it before watching it this time, you know, because I was watching it more closely, but it's one of three moments in the movie where Shorty and Indy's actions are like mirroring each other. Mm. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. like directly. Uh, the first, the first one you guys probably talked about where, you know, Shorty's got his hat in the Indian village and he puts it on and he sort of rests his hands in his palms in the same yeah. way that, yeah. that Indy does. The Jaws hands. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there are a few of those. Yeah. And it's like in the same shot as well, you know. Uh -huh. So I kind of I kind of wonder what the thinking was behind that, like why like what what was Shorty supposed to symbolize for Indiana Jones that made it so that what was happening to Indy was actually happening to him. It, it kind of reminds, I don't, do you, do you ever watch Garfield and friends, the old cartoon? <laughs> um, <laughs> can't say that I have. I'm sorry. Well, there was a cartoon Garfield and friends and it was it, it had this other cartoon tacked onto it called U.S. Acres, which was actually kind of better than the Garfield cartoon. But <laughs> one of the characters in it was a duck that walked around with a life preserver wrapped around his waist. And the life preserver had as a decoration on the front of it a very small version of himself. <laughs> and so awesome. whenever the duck would like make an expression or get surprised or whatever the very tiny version of himself on the life preserver would do the exact same thing oh wow it was just like this weird visual gag that like unless you were looking for it you didn't really notice that it was happening and it kind of reminds me of that but i don't know why they put it in there like i don't know what spielberg's thinking was when he was like let's just do this thing where like you know shorty and indy are, are like the same person in some way yeah, we've been going back and forth the entire time about like, you know, what is their like, do we are we supposed to see them as like a father son kind of thing? Or are they strictly like buddy sidekicks? Like business partners? Yeah, business partners or, <laughs> yeah. you know, are they chained to each other escaping a chain gang or something, you know, but it's <laughs> like they they we get versions of all of those and they come up and, and Jer particularly, you're you're uncomfortable when the, the, the paternal sort of stuff comes up. You're like, yeah. Ah. Yeah, well, I mean, I think... This kid just helped him kill a guy. Uh, that's not <laughs> what, we, what, we, what we see here isn't really a symbiotic relationship. It's parasitic. Because <laughs> <laughs> Who's the parasite? If, yeah, if, I was well, if, well, no, if anything bad happens to Shorty, 
I'd say it's it's because of Indy. I mean, oh, yeah. you kind of you <laughs> kind of get the idea. You're like, oh, Indy is saving Shorty, and you're like, yeah, I guess he was an orphan and I, he adopted him, or he's allowed him to tag along, or he's I I don't know. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> if Shorty's getting whipped, it's because of Indy's ineptitude and you <laughs> yeah. know yeah. risk riscophilic behavior. <laughs> Although you get the sense that Shorty would never see it that way. No. For for good or I don't know if that's good or bad. I can't Yo, tell. he he's seven. He's seven. <laughs> right. He's seven. Throughout this movie, Shorty shows himself to be not only braver than Indiana Jones and more heroic from time to time, but also he I think he tends to have a lot purer motives. Mm-hmm. So he's almost like an angelic version of Indy. Like a, huh. an innocent version of Indy. I totally agree. I yeah. actually wrote that down in my notes as I think of Short Round as being the true hero of the film. Because yeah. he helps, he saves Indy. He does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Like several times, yeah. And he, he's, he's always trying to keep him on the straight and narrow too. He's like the kind of, he's sort of like the Jiminy Cricket sometimes. He's like, hey, you listen to me, you live longer. You yeah, know? that's right. I'm I'm the brains of this operation. <laughs> is it, do we have a scene in the movie where Indy saves Short Round? Not not anecdotal about what happened before, <laughs> like a scene in the movie. Leave him alone, you bastard! He screams at him. That doesn't really save him. <laughs> he kind of saves him over the lava, but I mean, you could say that he kind of put himself in that situation in the first place. So sure, sure, yeah, yeah he does kind of. Well, we'll get cleaning to up it. his own mess. I can't really think of anything though but but on the other hand we just come off of a, a minute like a week or two ago where shorty fights off attackers to give willie time to escape and you mm-hmm. know that deleted scene to run and get help and he really like he fights like a tiger you know it's amazing he like he just even like the last minute or something when he went bananas on all, all these guys yeah like you know it didn't lead anywhere yeah. but he, he was ready to kill everybody in that room to free yeah. his friend dr jones yeah kicking people in the nuts and stuff yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a kids. scrappy yeah. kid <laughs> yeah He's a very uh he's very much a Robin to in these Batman mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. I was wondering did was there was there did the, did the executive say you need to have some kids in here to make it more kid friendly was it like cuz it really struck me as being something almost like Robin when they were like, you know what, this is this this Batman character is great, but it's a little bit too dark. We want to make it kid friendly. <laughs> throw in some Robin, but there are some right. certain rules, you know, you got to throw in some kids and like you know, okay, we'll have some kids in this Indiana Jones movie. And then they but were like, "Watch oh, how yeah. gruesome it can be with kids." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. Right. But you know what's what's weird is, I mean, if you talk about let's throw some kids in and make it family friendly, <laughs> I mean, I, I I ask, is it better or worse that Shorty is lashed by another kid? That's actually we were bringing that up a, a few minutes ago. Like, yeah, you know, like what's the Maharaja's role in this movie? Is, is he is the Maharaja a kid because? you know, Shorty needs some kind of evil foil or something. And then you see a scene like this, you're like, oh yeah, he would never, they would never let an adult <laughs> whip Shorty, I don't think. That's what it is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they couldn't have an adult whipping him. And and Shorty probably needs a kid, who, or he needs somebody his own size who he can legitimately beat up too, I think, yeah, probably, that's, yeah. in later scenes. Well, yeah. I don't know, is is that worse than an adult whipping him? For you go, well, that would be horrible if adult, you're like, well, I don't know, I mean, it, it's, <laughs> for the kid who's whipping him, I mean, it's, but that kid's blood is filled with demons. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's got demons in his blood. Yeah. Give him a break. <laughs> but you know, the other thing I was wondering, is the Maharaja using a Fisher-Price My First Whip? Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he totally is. Yeah, like ages eight and up, little tight lash. <laughs> is it sort of like a like a cat of nine tails kind of thing or something? Or is it an actual whip? I, I think it's a similar one to the one that the thuggies are actually using on the kids in, in the mines. Oh, right. Because they yeah. have like a little whip. Yeah. My guess is it's that, but it is funny. It's it's cute, especially given yeah. that deleted <laughs> scene earlier where Indy teaches the Maharaja at the beginning how to use the whip. Oh, see, oh, I've never seen that. No, we can't. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think. Do they even film that? They, they didn't film it. They never, it never made okay. it to the filming section. But yeah, there's a whole scene where Indy teaches the Maharaja how to use the whip, and Shorty gets really jealous. And at that point, you know, Shorty kind of gets into a little scuffle with the Maharaja, and the Maharaja turns to him, and his eyes glow yellow, kind of like these demon eyes. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Like, if that had been in there, 
I think maybe short, we just said like Shorty would never blame Indiana Jones for any of the stuff that he's in. <laughs> but if he had taught the kid how to whip him more effectively, he'd be like, right. oh my God, Dr. Yeah. Jones, for God's yeah. sake. Done. <laughs> yeah. Well, you uh, you mentioned, I think, Pete, a cat of nine tails. Or Tom mentioned that, yeah. Oh, Tom, did you mention a cat of nine tails? I want full I, credit for a cat of nine tails. You get full credit. <laughs> Thank I you. wanted. Did, did anybody see that in second 24... Pat Roach has dice on the end of his whip. Does he? Are they gold <laughs> dice, like Chewy's dice? Did they? Yeah, they're like Chewy's dice. They they fly off during that second whip. Oh my god! Huh. If you look at it, second twenty four, and I'm watching it, and I'm like, he's totally the type of uh, torturer or reoccurring brutalizer who would <laughs> festoon his whip with dice. You know, it it, it like. Right increases pain and it gives him a little bit of yang but is that not indy's whip yeah i think i thought it was indy's whip whipping too. him with it well he, he may have applied him he could have he put a he put a he applied him at the edge himself and maybe those dice belonged to the guy that indy hung with his whip in the <laughs> in the, <laughs> yeah. the palace room just earlier on and he's just like this was dave's dice i'm gonna whip you with him <laughs> <laughs> so you're the one who got dave <laughs> I hope he had like some great line afterwards, though, like snake eyes, or you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! What's interesting is is uh, Pat Roach's his Pat Roach's first stroke is a right-handed backhand, but his second stroke is a left-handed forehand, and I'm huh. like, that's some ambidextrous whipping. Yeah. He does it all. He's yeah. a switch yeah. whipper. He is. He does switch whip. And the Maharaja does, he whips Shorty with a two-handed backhand, which is really cute. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Cute. yeah. He needs all that strength. Yeah. And I wonder <laughs> if they told him, like, make it cute. Like, I wonder if they specifically tried to make the whipping cute for the kids. My first cat of nine tails. <laughs> that kid is pretty ter- terrifying to me. You know, there's a, a couple of shots of him where, especially the one where he pulls out the voodoo doll to stab indiana jones and it's like mm-hmm. this yeah this shot where he you see you see him from behind first and he turns around and reveals that he's got the thing in his hand mm-hmm. and he's got this look on his face like uh do you ever see sleepaway camp oh my god i can't believe you just said sleepaway <laughs> camp i was just thinking about that yeah that's incredible the, the face that angela has at the i end, love right? the show <laughs> yes he looks exactly like that yeah. that's incredible <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I don't feel good yeah. about this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, it's, it's like that hyper exaggerated. Like I'm a crazy person. Yeah, kind of yeah, like. totally. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. And then we get another another great crazy person look and a great line when Mola Ram says, "You dare not do that." And yeah, he's, he's holding the the head and he's got blood dripping down his face, which I assume is from being spat upon. By India. Yeah. Like, I don't think it's yeah. his own blood, but it's like no. a very cinematic looking thing. And he starts to do a chant. Um, and the chant here is great. Mola Ram chants, strike and strike that pig again, tear oh. his skin and drink his blood. Which wow. It, wow. It, it makes me think a couple things. One, Indy, I think, is slated to become the next Joe and Mo Googly Eyes. Like, they're going to skin him <laughs> oh, and then they're yeah. going to use his oh. blood for the next blood of Kali, you know, the Kali. Ah. Oh. Kalaid. Could be. Kalaid. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff doesn't make itself. <laughs> but then the second thing is that Mola Ram calls him a pig. He says, strike that pig again. And the next time we hear someone calling Indy a pig, chronologically, is in a submarine pin in Raiders, that German oh. officer calls him a pig. And that's oh, when yeah. Indy just goes ice cold and kicks him in the rucksuckle. And I think he's thinking this made him so psychotically mad that when it happens in Raiders, he just snaps. Yeah. Ah, whatever you do, don't call him a pig. Don't call him yeah. A pig. <laughs> so slowly, I turned. Yeah. yeah this the the shot you're talking about, Amol Ram like holding the thing, and don't you dare do that and stuff. This actually makes me really sad because watching it this time, I realized, oh, this is uh, like a glimpse of a movie that will never exist, but that I badly want to see because Amol Ram in that shot looks just like Abe Vigoda. <laughs> and I badly want to be able to go. <laughs> wow. What kind of amazing movie would that be? <laughs> Tell Shorty I always liked him. It wasn't personal. So we have a, there's a, a crazy thing that happened at this point. This might be a good time to bring it up during the filming of this scene. 
while they were filming it, Harrison Ford's chained up against that Star Trek dude like that. And mm-hmm. and right when he's about to be whipped, Barbara Streisand comes onto the set wearing a dominatrix <laughs> outfit. I and totally she starts, forgot about this. Yeah, and she oh starts whipping him. And she says, she says a bunch of stuff. And she says, this is for the guns of Navarone. And she whips him. And she says, this is for Hanover Street. And she whips him. And then she says, this is for all the money you're going to make in Return of the Jedi. And she whips him. Oh and at that God. point, Carrie Fisher, dressed like a thuggy, comes running in and stands between Barbara Streisand and Indy. And she saves him. And she says, uh, someone needs you. <laughs> Like she starts oh kissing gosh. him, and then she says, wow. "Someone needs you." And at this point, Irvin Kirshner steps out of the crowd, and he says, "I don't believe a word you're saying. Come on, stop. Do it over. Put some like put some weight <laughs> into the whip." <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Wait, this is just like some goof thing that they were doing. Like it a, it's like a Spielberg practical joke. Oh, that's hysterical! Can you find that anywhere? Yeah. Does it exist? I've seen it on YouTube. Really? But it's like, really? It's like a terrible recording. Oh, I'll take it. We'll put it on. Well, yeah, we'll put it on the listeners' crusade. That's and, crazy. Yeah, that's bizarre. Wow. Yeah. Because aren't like Carrie Fisher and Barbara Streisand weren't they pals or something? Carrie Fisher was friends with everybody. <laughs> oh, wow. That's insane. That yeah. Is insane. There are a lot of ways this movie could be a lot different and maybe better. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Barbara Streisand and Carrie Fisher might be one. Well, we should say, Song, you uh, requested this. Whole, this this sequence, this particular m- minute, yeah, is, yeah, is one of the one of the minutes that I I love the most in this movie, and it it's because of Mola Rams, his laying out of what's going to happen to the gods of the world. Oh, <laughs> right, right. I, you know, I this is like a huge. I have the quote here, actually, because of what you, you what you said. This is this is like one of the biggest minutes in the movie. And and the, what Mola Ram says, and this was a little bit of help of uh, Pete. He he, uh, you he helped me. The British in India will be slaughtered. Then we will overrun the Muslims. Then the Hebrew God will fall, and then the Christian God will be cast down and forgotten. And uh, this it's is in a, the wrong order. <laughs> yeah, well, not only that. That's what I was yeah, wondering. Right? Yeah. Yeah. My, it should be, they're all the Hebrew gods. They're all the Hebrew yeah. gods. That's yeah. First of all, yeah. but like, yeah. if you're going to, you should do the Hebrew first, maybe, and then yeah. the Christians and Muslims, or the other way, but why would you do the Hebrew in the middle? Well, that, that is sense. weird. There, because there was a huge Muslim presence in India. Yeah, well. exactly. Yeah. So he's actually talking about the British first, and then he's talking about the Muslims. And, and, then and the there world. was actually a large Jewish population like along the coasts as well. Really? Oh, really? so is he talking like geographically? Like we're here, <laughs> he could and we're be, surrounded actually. by British, and then we have to get to the Muslims. Yeah, this would actually be historically and geographically accurate to, to ah. portray. Well, it geographically, way. that's what. It, but see, this is a prime example of what I like to call Mola rambling. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's just. I mean, he's just. It's. It's. First of all, as we say, he's mixing his government slaughters with his deicides. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which just doesn't make sense. And, and, you know, as we said, is, uh, the Hebrew God and the Christian God, I mean, they're, they're the same guy. And and you're like, why do the Buddhists get a pass? Right. You know, why do they, <laughs> yeah. or, or even the Sikhs. I mean, why do the Sikhs get a pass or the Buddhists get a pass? But the Buddhists had been pretty much wiped out of India, or, of, of India by this point. By this point? Yeah, there weren't very many Buddhists left in India. So they're just not on his mind, I guess. Maybe they're just not on his radar. Okay, yeah. maybe. maybe he just has specific beefs with these four groups that he mentions. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, <laughs> they, they wronged me back in the day. They're like some kids he went to school with or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Those punks, I'll show them. That's exactly what this feels like. It's like he's upset at the kids he went to school with. Like, Mola Ram. Yeah. you, screw devi- you, yeah, screw you. Screw you. You're okay. Yeah. He just he devised this machination while building a pillow fort. <laughs> like first we're gonna get all the chocolate yeah. milk in the world yeah. then we're gonna yeah. the buddhists let me copy off them in math they're cool i'll, I'll let them slide and be thankful george lucas didn't do his little magic here and you know like he would have been and i'll bring down the chachapoyans like little fan service with the other movies <laughs> oh yeah oh god <laughs> but oh, it, wow. it 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 really you're like if adolf hitler gets the ark of the covenant like I'm not entirely sure what he's gonna do with it, but it's it's gonna be horrible, and you know it's gonna. I mean, there's all sorts of bad stuff that could happen, and and you can go many places, and they make sense. 
I know mm-hmm. that might sound silly, but they do. They make sense. <laughs> right. If Molaram gets like the fifth Sankara stone, you're like, all right, well, so first he's going to slaughter the, the British. You're like, okay. Then he's going to do a bunch of some, yeah, I guess he'll overrun the Muslims. And then yeah. we're going to like all get race cars. And then everybody was going to, we're going to make it like eternally yeah. summer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then we all build gumdrop houses. <laughs> <laughs> It just is ridiculous. I don't know. He's he's he's. It's a. It's not a well devised plan. You're like you realize you're in the basement of like yeah. you know a hotel basically a nice hotel. <laughs> well, I mean, I I tend to think of it as being like you know the time period is 1935. So this is at the same time that Gandhi is struggling for Indian independence. Mm, yeah, as well, you know, and so. I like a lot of this really seems like it's a political thing to me, you know, like earlier on in the movie when they're all sitting at monkey brain dinner. Yeah. Monkey brain dinner. <laughs> there's the whole, we remember it well. Yeah. There's the whole conversation between Indy Chatterlal and what's his name? Bloombert. Yeah. Yeah. Bloombert, yeah. 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 And Chatterlal's attitude about the British being there at all is one that's com- completely like filled with rage but repressed out of out of necessity and british mm-hmm. yeah yeah he did have a british a, education <laughs> right and he had a british educa- education but resented the british being there and it, yeah and so it really seems like from mola ram's point of view his his whole plan to me seems like it's about retaking india for for indians mm-hmm. yeah and we've we've been talking about that a little bit is it possible that, you know, we're looking at this through very Western eyes, but is it possible that, like, if we were to look at this, turn the coin a little bit, is Mola Ram a freedom fighter, and he's right. fighting against this oppressive power, and maybe his motives don't necessarily look so sinister? Right. I mean, yeah. Like, what's he say about the kids? Well, no, that's a later minute. I'm not going to get into <laughs> it. Right. No spoilers. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, so sometimes I I watch this movie, and by the way, I should say that this is my favorite Indiana Jones movie. Oh, awesome, cool. Um, when I watch this, there's something that's slightly in, inspiring about it, though his methods are pretty horrible, and I, I'm not exactly sure, you know, what what necessitates ripping people's hearts out. It, I mean, that <laughs> maybe just adds to like the the complete sort of like like just craziness of this movie. I mean, because this this movie is dark, man, you know, like, (laughs) and it just seems like it's dark for darkness's sake sometimes. Like, why is that happening? There's just people screaming right now. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Catching on fire and dying. (laughs) Kids getting whipped over there. That, that uh, brings up a good question I have. Is this minute, minute 76, the darkest minute of the movie? It feels like it right now with like Shorty yeah. getting whipped and everything and I would actually maybe I would actually maybe vote that the next minute is the darkest, but this is close, I think. Okay. Okay. Huh. Yeah. It's definitely in here. The in yeah. the yeah. second yeah. act. Is, yeah. Yeah. It's sure. definitely in this lava cave. Like we're in the ballpark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, there is one part that I, I mean, the, not in 1984, this wouldn't have made any sense to me, but now, um, since Ed Wood has come out, when he says, Kali Ma will rule the world, I cannot not hear Martin Landau as Bella Lugosi. <laughs> <laughs> well, rule the world! <laughs> why, why, I mean, I might be a little naive, but why would somebody want to rule the world? It seems like a lot of work. I wonder that a lot. With all these movies, like any movie where somebody wants to rule the world, it's like yeah, you know, yeah. like Palpatine or anybody. It's like what, yeah. really, then yeah, what? and like this guy already has servants and he has a nice life and a fancy house. Like what? Yeah. What else is he? I, yeah, maybe it's just a different mindset, but he's a megalomaniac, perhaps. Yeah, you know, you know they always say like, what was it? They say like Alexander the Great, like was you know he basically ruled the world, like mm-hmm. as, at least as much of the known world as he could. And, you know, basically he got as far as India and then he took over all the lands. It was a lot of fun to acquire it. But they always said, like, he was a great conqueror, but that doesn't mean he was a good governor. Right. Because governing is a pain in the ass. Yeah. 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 It was a lot harder than he thought it would be. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, yes. Who knew it would be so difficult? Like about the the Roman Empire seems that way, too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's killing each other to try to become Caesar, and then it's like, oh, wait, not everyone's just going to try to kill you, and you're not going to get a mess for What a drag. (laughs) (laughs) 
I agree, though. I think, yeah, I think the fun part would be the taking over part. So maybe that's what he's looking forward to. No, it, but yeah. you're right. He says he wants to rule the world. Yeah. Does he say that he wants to rule the world or that Kali Ma will rule the world? Well, that's true. He, he does say Kali, Kali Ma will, will rule the world. world. Yeah. Everybody that's wants it. to rule the world. <laughs> 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 it's a mad world. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Well, the only other thing I have for this minute is we brought this up briefly last time too, but if you've ever had a sick cat, like the way they give Indy the blood in the scene is exactly the same way you give a sick cat his medicine. Wow. Yeah. That's and then you, you, need to like, uh, you need to rub the little, you need to love, yeah. rub the neck to make yeah. sure it goes down. Make sure his mouth's closed. Yeah. Yeah. I would... They do the right thing. Wow. Pour the medicine in a big mouse skull. Did they just... <laughs> Did they, <laughs> did, they, did they just put a skull on a gravy boat? It, it yeah. totally looks like it. Yeah. Or jammed one into a skull's mouth or something. Yeah, like yeah. a gravy boat. I never realized that when I was a kid. I always thought it was some sort of weird metal tongue. But watching yeah. it and you know, paying a lot of attention, I realized there's like a handle on the end. And it really looks like a gravy boat just like yeah. careened into someone's skull. I feel like his grandson made him that or something in craft class or something. <laughs> See, I was that that his grandson made it in shop class. Yeah, exactly. Right. Oh, it's great, dear. Thank you. Yeah, maybe that's how that guy died. Like maybe somebody <laughs> yeah. shoved a gravy boat through the back of his head and they just. <laughs> and we're assuming that. Uh... We're assuming that, you know, that the guy, that the skull had, you know, his mouth was fashioned for pouring out, but maybe it was for pouring in. Oh. Maybe, maybe that guy's skull, you know, when he, when he was living before he was decapitated, he, he just wanted to, <laughs> he just wanted the, the fluid or the gravy poured down his gullet. Or it's like when your mom says, if, if you keep making that face, it's going to freeze like that. <laughs> <laughs> gravy face. Yeah, the gravy yeah. face. <laughs> Take it easy, gravy face. That was that was the duck face of 1935. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, 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 wait! This just oh. in from Professor Christie Porter. Oh. <laughs> Something is wrong with these people, even if they are in the midst of an ugly divorce. <laughs> oh yeah. I think she's, she's talking about the uh directors and yeah, producers. Yeah. yeah. They got they got something stewing. Yeah, she might have a yeah. point there. <laughs> Excellent. Well, does anybody else have anything about minute seventy six? I think that's all I got for this minute. Me too. Okay, great. Me and too. uh Song and Rachel, it's been fun having you on episode seventy six. Can you guys come back tomorrow? You know it. Sure. Excellent. And you guys, Yay. is there anything you'd like to talk about if people would like to find you elsewhere online or hear you elsewhere? Yeah, you can find us at planetlumina.com. That's our website for our podcast about General Hospital, should you be inclined to listen to something like that. Which goes on many tangents as well. Cool. We like tangents. Yeah. Yes. We have a Facebook page as well. Yes, Planet Lumina Planet Facebook Lumina. page, and you know we're on Twitter. We're on we're on all the social media as Planet Lumina outlets as Planet yes. Lumina. That's the easiest place to find us. Yes, and it goes in many directions from there. <laughs> cool. And Tom, if people would like to check out our social media, oh, they can find us on the Twitter uh, at Indiana Jones Min. They can find us on Facebook at the uh, our group uh, Indiana Jones Minute and the Listeners Crusade. And uh, they could even just uh, go to iTunes, find us there, subscribe to us, leave us a nice review, spread the love. That's beautiful. That's yes. it. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> and after you've done all that and listened to an episode of Planet Lumina, you can join us back here tomorrow for minute 77 of the Indiana Jones Minute. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I do too. Oh, I'm